Domination University. Cheers, Maya. That's right. Philosophy, Domination University. Pouring it up. (laughs) So this is Francesca. I'm here with my friend Maya. And I think we're about to do a combination of domination, university, and velocity. It's hard to tell, but uh, my special guest here is such a balanced person that I feel like we could kind of have a little bit of both. So welcome. Welcome, Maya. (laughs) I I try to stay balanced. (laughs) Yeah. How does that work for you? What's the key to being like a balanced person? Honestly, I mean, when people say like, They try to maintain a healthy lifestyle. I feel like nowadays mental health is a big part of it. And um, yeah, when I was 20, I met a lot of people. I I networked as a hairstylist and I met people networking who were like healers and um, I traded with massage therapists and they all just seemed very grounded and just had a good energy. I wanted to be around them and, you know, I... I asked what it was they did, and a lot of it was meditation, and I just kind of became obsessed with it and really try to focus on it, and that that definitely helps a lot, so. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that's how you got into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I've met a lot of interesting people doing hair. You meet people from all different walks of life, and um, a lot of my clients when I was younger, I mean, they were all in their 40s, 50s, and you know, have had more life experience and um, we're just very spiritual and I just, it just drew me in. I don't know. It was something about them. And so, uh, so yeah, meditation definitely um, has made a huge impact on my life. And yeah, it's, it's just as necessary as, you know, physical exercise and eating healthy, um, if not more, I would say. So, so yeah. Wow. (laughs) That's awesome. It's, it's nice to hear that you've had that type of experience too as a hairdresser because I hear so many different things from hairdressers and the yeah. stress that you guys can be under. Yes. <laughs> but you, it sounds like you found a way. Uh, I've been meditating for a long time and I don't understand how people could not meditate. For me, I like to use the reference of let's say you, you have a computer, maybe it's an old computer and you never knew how to delete temporary files or delete your cookies or to like (laughs) defrag or to empty the recycling bin and you just go around with all this shit just piling up slowing everything down but when you learn meditation you learn how to you know clear your browsing history you know clear all these old files you don't need and then have a, a a lighter you know more efficient machine Yeah, the way I think of it is like our brain, it's just all these different wires and we're we're literally rewiring our brain and just growing up and, you know, our parents' influence and societal influence and um, just people we've been surrounded by our whole lives and um, yeah, just seeing people and if they seem unhappy, but they've lived their life so long thinking in their own ways and just their perspective. And for me, it's like, well, I'm younger, like why not kind of recreate myself and just kind of find that balance. And so, yeah, it's literally just rewiring your brain. So it's, yeah, I, I love it. And, um, it does take a while to really notice a difference. I feel like after a year of meditating, um, just once a week, you know, um, I would just be put in situations and, I would wait for these feelings to happen, um, and it tends to usually be negative feelings, and after a while, I'm like, huh, I'm not feeling, like, this jealousy or this envy, and that's interesting, and (laughs) so, like, this, this does work. It just, it takes time, and it's not instant, just like with anything, you know, so, so, yeah, yeah, patience is, it's a huge key to it. Awesome. How did you learn how to meditate? Was there, like, a, a... A book you read? Were you looking for guided meditations? Um, Well, one of my really good friends, I trade with her. She does fire cupping. She's a Reiki master and she does tarot readings. And I I met her in my networking group and she just asked me if I wanted to start trading and if I was interested in having my tarot read and she needed her hair done. So I was like, sure, why not? You know, and 
um, yeah, she would do my tarot and she asked if I wanted to be attuned to Reiki. So I was like, sure. Like I'm super down. I'm very open to it. I've never heard of it before I met her. And, um, yeah, so with Reiki, it's actually helped me to meditate a lot. So um, I just kind of asked her how how she would focus, and she's really just kind of guided me through everything. So she's a, a big influence and someone I do look up to a lot. And um, yeah, just how to how to live my life and just especially with meditating. So with Reiki, that's really helped me kind of focus um, – on the different symbols. And I, I, I think that helps a lot more than just having like a mantra or just a word you're focusing on. So I'm, I'm more of a visualizing person. Mm. I, I prefer visualization. So with the symbols you learn in Reiki, it, it's helped me to focus more and has, um, just helps me relax and just be still. Awesome. Stillness. Yeah. Isn't that funny that You know, (laughs) when you're a kid, you don't really care about stillness. You're like, I'm bored. And then as you grow up and then you have so many responsibilities and pressures and stuff, and you're like, I need some goddamn stillness, please. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And when I first started meditating, I mean, just doing it for three minutes was so hard. And um, eventually it got to five minutes and then 10 minutes, 15. And um, on average, it's about one to two hours like maybe two and a half sometimes if I'm going through a lot of shit, wow. but, uh, one and one and a half hours is about average per week. But it's, yeah. And usually it's once through uh, once a week, like I'll meditate if I wake up in the morning and you know, before my alarm goes off, I'll kind of take a minute to just kind of focus and start my day. Or, mm-hmm. um, a lot of the time it's when I'm laying in bed, I've always had trouble falling asleep. So with Reiki, it just helps me kind of focus and meditate and eventually I doze off. And yeah, so, Hmm. so on average a day, it's maybe five minutes, but once a week, it's about hour, hour and a half. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So, um, do you want to tell us anything more about Reiki? Um, especially in terms of how you, um, kind of use it for your own growth. Uh, sometimes people think about, you know, Reiki healings and this, this and that, but, um, as an individual practice or do you do it on people also, or are you kind of yeah, still progressing with it's yeah. I mean, I just feel like because my friends that I look up to, you know, as these spiritual advisors, um, they're a lot older than me and I feel like they're just a lot more intuitive with their life experience. And so I kind of hold that bar of spirituality very high. Um, so my friend attuned me to Reiki too, which I can start practicing on people and I was, but I mean, overall I've maybe only done five Reiki sessions on people and I've well, been if you want number six yeah. right here, girl, <laughs> I, I do need a, I do need a practice. I need to pick it back up again. I do it on myself all the time. Um, I do it on Alex when he's asleep. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> well, we all know he needs it. Yeah. We were talking about it last night. I was like, yeah, I Reiki rape him. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> But, oh, uh, you're a lot too, because you're his partner, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but um, I mean, I haven't done it on other people just because I get a little self-conscious. And um, yeah, I, I, I tend to lack confidence sometimes, but I've had some interesting kind of breakthroughs um, with other people or getting Reiki done on myself by my friend, because she still does Reiki on me every now and then when we trade. Um, but what I love about Reiki is like anyone can be attuned to it. Like you don't have to be spiritual. I mean, they say Jesus was a Reiki healer. He healed with his hands. You can be of any religion. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just a spiritual attunement that opens up your heart chakra. Um, so it makes your energy a little more sensitive, but it's like anyone can do it. And I think that's awesome. You know, you don't have to reach this certain, level of enlightenment and I think that's like the most beautiful part of it is it's not exclusive to a certain type of group Mm -hmm. um and it's just really helped me with my own meditation so I definitely use it to focus on myself more Mm -hmm. um but with Reiki yeah it's 
the way I see it is like, man, I'm, I'm always working on myself. There's always healing I need to do on myself. So how can I help others heal if I'm still healing? But my, I tell my friend that, and she's like, I mean, you help heal yourself through helping others. So, so it's just building up that confidence again and doing that. So that's, that's definitely, I think, something I need to focus on in the new year. <laughs> awesome. It's yeah. good to have goals. Is there anything that you could describe about Reiki to the average person who maybe doesn't have a clear understanding? Because I know what you mean when, when you talk about Reiki, and yeah. it's really hard to describe these people, this type of thing, to people who are maybe not as initiated into... Yeah. I mean, my the- favorite thing about Reiki... my. The best way I can um, compare it to anything is uh, the Force from Star Wars. Ah. Everyone has seen Star Wars. I have seen it as a kid, but it didn't resonate with me. And um, as an adult, after I got a tuna reiki, I watched Star Wars, you know, episodes five, six, seven, Um, four, five, six. I think it's four, five, five, six. six. Yeah. Okay. Four, five, six. And in the fifth one, um, where Luke is doing his training with Yoda, um, you know, the way he explained the forest is it's this energy, um, this oneness that connects all of us. We all come here from it and we all go back to it. And you're basically borrowing this energy and using it on other people. So I feel like with the Force in Star Wars, that's like what Reiki is. And um, that's the easiest way I can dumb it down because most people can relate to Star Wars. But yeah, um, you're borrowing this life force from the Earth and from each other. And just, you know, it goes through your your crown chakra to your heart and out your hands. And you're helping others um, with this energy to heal them. And, you know, I'm not saying it's like, oh, Western medicine is bullshit. Like Reiki heals (laughs) all like, no, I, you know, if I'm sick or if I have certain ailments, you know, like, yeah, I do go to the doctor, but I feel like it helps on a mental level. And a lot of mental issues tend to manifest physically. Right. So I feel like, you know, when you tend to heal yourself mentally, it helps some physical ailments or issues so it's it's definitely helped me but but I do take it you know with a grain of salt (laughs) so wow yeah tapping into the force for everyday life I love it my cousin is a nurse and she actually practices reiki on some of her patients she gets their permission she doesn't reiki rape them (laughs) yeah but uh you know if someone's really sick and i mean i I love that she's a nurse and then she does all her like witchy stuff too in addition but that's a really good reference yeah my friend um who attuned me my friend who's a reiki master she actually volunteered at the city of hope doing reiki on cancer patients that's amazing yeah so it's like even doctors are like wow like this helps patients on a certain level where you yeah. know it just yeah so I think it just helps their them emotionally and mentally you know which helps physically so so right yeah. yeah one of the things that cancer patients usually struggle with is you know first they get discouraged and I used to have a lot of clients who had cancer it was just the nature of the ins- insurance I sold yeah. and so the discouragement into sometimes hopelessness, into all these emotions that, you know, that are just built upon, you know, the body being weakened and having to go through all this very intensive, invasive procedures to try to clean it up. And I mean, I can just only imagine based on what I've been told, the roller coaster that is that, but it makes sense then if you're lifting up the spirit, if you're trying to tune the emotional being and a human, uh, that it would naturally strengthen the whole organism yeah, and allow one to be able to heal uh, better, you know, when you feel that inner strength. Yeah, I totally agree. I have a client who, um, her mom's Buddhist and she got attuned to Reiki and my client, you know, she's Buddhist too. And she's like with the Reiki, she's like, Oh, I mean, I'm not against it, but I'm not sure if I believe in it. 
but she told me her mom was suffering with arthritis in her hands. And when her mom got attuned, she's telling me her mom's arthritis started getting a little better, wow. you know? So, so yeah, whether it's like the placebo effect or, you know, mm-hmm. if like there really is this energy going through us, it does help on some level. So, so why not? You know, it doesn't exactly. Hurt. <laughs> yeah. Well, just the way that you use it in your normal life, you know, to, um, to get your stillness. I mean, how priceless is that? I mean, so many people suffer on a regular basis from stress, yeah. just regular everyday stress that has nothing to do with a terminal illness or like a major, you know, life event that, you know, that you're just really struggling through, but just the average person, average human in America, you know, uh, going through whatever they go through to try to keep a roof over their head or to find some type of, you know, professional or personal satisfaction, you know, to be able to open one up. And so you can feel that stillness or feel that peace, you know, I mean, why not try that? Yeah. And like with what I do for work, I'm, I consider myself a natural introvert, but with work, you know, I have to be on and extroverted. Um, (laughs) and some people really do treat hairstylists like therapists. Oh, so, yeah. So um, I do have some clients that they just like unload just heavy shit on me. Um, so I feel like it just kind of helps when I'm balanced and also their energy isn't leaking onto me. Because sometimes, you know, in the past when people have vented to me, it stays with me. And then mm. I just feel so like, you know, I feel like I'm going through what they're going through. And I had a client pay me like just to listen to him talk. Wow. He, he decided for his hair appointment, he's like, you know what? My hair looks fine, but I will pay you for the hour. I just need someone to listen. And I was just wow. like, oh, okay, sure. And then by the end of it, I was like, oh my God, like that was way heavier than I thought. Like, <laughs> kind of wish I didn't agree to that. But yeah, so I feel Damn. like Reiki does protect my aura, my energy, because, you know, people like they come in and just unload so much and yeah, it's, it's hard, you know? Isn't that sad though, that that person didn't have the tools to be able to handle it in a yeah. way that was maybe more convenient? Yeah. It's, you know? Cause... Yeah. And he's had bad experience with therapists, you know, it's like, yeah, therapists are like hairstylists, you know, there, there's a lot of good ones, but there's a lot of bad ones too. Um, <laughs> And he's also just very religious, and I think his religion is just kind of, you know, just taught him. And as a man, like, hold in your feelings. Like, wow. you shouldn't have to – and, yeah, so for me, um, I want my clients to feel comfortable in my chair because I'm in their personal space. So, you know, when my clients are comfortable, they vent to me. So mm. he felt comfortable enough to unload this on me. I'm this unbiased person. I don't know anyone in his life. Like, he can trust me. You know, it's definitely a client confidentiality. Like, I, you know, it is it is a lot like being a therapist, except way less school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Yeah. Th- there's a lot of intimacy that yeah. you have between your hairdresser. And, I mean, I, I do feel bad sometimes for hairdressers where it just seems like, you know, you're just kind of trapped there. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard when you get the clients that you don't want, but they're just like parasites. I, I did have one client that did kind of stalk me. Um, she would like try to add me on social media or she would, you know, text me for an appointment and I'd be like, yeah, sure. And then she would just text me like everything going on in her life and like oh, even God. ask to borrow money to pay her rent like what? it's yeah so that's when I was younger and I was more vulnerable and so now that I've gotten older I'm more aware of people like that and I'm just like nope money's not worth it like I can get another client that's gonna respect my boundaries and yeah so it's there's a lot of people who are like energy parasites and right. so I just try to like <laughs> repel those <laughs> Right. Well, it's it's so sad, though, because the average person doesn't know how to meditate, and the average person certainly doesn't know what Reiki is or how yeah. to tap into the force. And, I mean, I think that's why there's a lot of motivation for this project to be able to talk about different tools and to be able to explore the different intricacies of being human and, the you know, the challenges that we face and the way we overcome those. Yeah. What, I, yeah, tell, t- talk to me more. I want to, I, I just want to ask you all these questions. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, I forget. It's, 
I forget the author. I want to say it's Diane. I forget her last name and I could be wrong, but she wrote the first book about Reiki. And there was so much controversy because Reiki was not supposed to be written down. It was such a like private club. Ah. And so, you know, like they only used to um, attune people to Reiki and they would write the symbols in the sand and then erase it so it couldn't be written down. And so when this woman came out with this book, I believe it was like early to mid 90s, people like it was so controversial and people were pissed because they were like, no, <laughs> like you, this is against the rules. Like you shouldn't do this. But her idea was like, if this is something that can help everyone, like why not? And I started reading a little bit into it and she was talking about her life and how she got attuned and she didn't even really get attuned um, until later, but mm -hmm. she learned the symbols and had a friend who was only a tuna Reiki too. And they were like, okay, I can try to attune you, but I'm not a Reiki master. I haven't been attuned to the highest level. So whatever. But she said she felt a difference. Um, but then she had friends who were Reiki masters that were like, no, that's not right. You shouldn't be doing that. So, so I found it interesting that it's like, oh, she was practicing Reiki without properly being attuned. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like, yeah, so it's, I just feel like there's this energy in all of us and, you know, with the spiritual attunement, whether it's the placebo effect or whether it really, these symbols do unlock, you know, our chakras to make, um, to make them more open mm -hmm. to healing and this energy, um, anyone, I feel like there is a certain energy in all of us. Um, we just have to use our mind to unlock it and just a lot of, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Just looking within, being aware, awareness. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Presence, just opening up. Right. Awesome. I'm so fascinated. I, <laughs> I apologize. I'm just kind of like trying to visualize <laughs> different symbolism because I'm not, I haven't studied Reiki, but I've studied really? other. Yeah, I know. I just, I kind of know what it is. I mean, you hear about so, so much stuff that has consistency, whether you're looking at shamanism or clairvoyance yeah. or, you know, uh, yoga or Buddhism and Zen and all that kind of stuff. And so there's a lot of overlap. I do tend to get nervous about religions, mm -hmm. even though I respect the fact that some things are sacred and you should be careful for those who are maybe uninitiated if you don't go through a natural process of yeah. peeling back and allowing your, your spirit to blossom in this world. You know, sometimes you can run into issues if people are trying to um, take shortcuts yeah. with their spiritual uh, evolution and you do see that in certain movements where you see like oh wear this crystal and you'll be able to open your third eye it was yeah. like well you know you have your own evolution of awakening to the whatever's blocking your third eye yeah you know so you don't want to take away from that but at the same time you do have to be careful with religion because any type of dogma you know could be missing the point could be yes. putting unnecessary boundaries up yeah or just too many rules you know like <laughs> yeah the rules. even wiccan my friend like she's part of a coven but she's like there's so much drama in it and mm -hmm. like wiccans are known to have um just an ego like oh I'm more spiritual than you like I've reached this enlightenment like I'm more evolved and a lot of spiritual people mm -hmm. are like that and oh, I yeah. was like that you know mm -hmm. and I still get like that so it's like just keeping my ego in place and yeah but I feel like when anything just puts up too many rules and you have to do things a certain way it's like I'm all for ritual like I said I'm a very visualizing person I need to see things in front of me um, but I feel like that kind of triggers something mentally where it's like, okay, it's a new moon. I'm lighting my candle. I have my four elements. I'm setting my intention. Um, you know, it's like that power is within me, but this just kind of helps unlock it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm very big into stones. I love stones. I think they're so visually pleasing to the eye. There's certain stones that I'm drawn to when I meditate, um, so with stones, it's like, you know, just holding the stone. Oh, yeah, if I hold the stone, like, it's going to have this magical power where all of a sudden, like, 
I'm going to be more confident or I'm going to get clarity. Like, Mm -hmm. it's like, no, but when I meditate, I focus, okay, the stone brings clarity and communication. All right. Like that's what I'm going to focus on. And eventually it does happen if I keep focusing on it, but it does take time, a lot of persistence, um, and stamina, mental stamina, Mm -hmm. but yeah, whether it's placebo or not, it, it helps me and mm-hmm. every person has their own thing and it's just you just got to find what works for you yeah it's yeah. just tools it's yeah. not and i think that's kind of what happens what goes wrong when you have the ego coming in or when yes. you get a little too sold on this and that and it's like well here here's some power over here it's uh 1999 and you can get four of them a limited time offer, you know, and yeah. so people lose track of what actual power is and where it comes from because it's it's always available to us. It's always running through us and whether or not we kind of suffocate it or we block it or it's we don't allow it to, you know, run as fluidly as it could in our human experience, um, you know, when it's inside you and outside you at the same time, it's not something that you can own yeah you know it's the ability to allow Mm. is that allowing rather than that reaching oh i need this over here here's my spiritual power here's my confidence yeah here's my clarity there it is you know it's like well wait a minute it's either there it's not you can't you know yeah you can't cheat yeah Yeah. Sometimes I do get a little um, self-conscious, like when I go to work and I'm like, oh no, I forgot my stones. Like, (laughs) but I keep stones at my station for that reason. But it's also like, you know, it is what it is. And it's, you know, just because I forget my stones doesn't mean like I'm going to get all these psychic attacks from everyone. And even days that I carry my stones are like, sometimes I have a bad day and I have all my stones on me and it's like, you know, yeah. Shit happens. Like shit happens. Yeah. It's uh it's funny because we were having this conversation last night. Me and Alex went over to Chelsea and Ryan's and we were talking a lot about, you know, spirituality and like science, you know, and proving it and all this stuff. And um uh who was I think Chelsea used the reference of Space Jam when they drink the water. So like uh-huh. in Space Jam, like how they beat the monsters is um, Bugs Bunny or someone grabbed a water bottle and wrote magic water on it uh-huh. and everyone's, you know, drinking it and they're all sparkling and they're like, yeah, we can do this, you know, mm-hmm. and it was just water. Right. And they beat the monsters and it's like, wow, that was in them the whole time. But, um, I just love that. She used Space Jam as her reference. Yeah. And she's talking about but, Chelsea, uh, Illy from the uh, Office of Sex Magic. Yes. Illy and the Spells. Good job, Illy. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's so funny. It's an ongoing spiritual journey to be able to recognize the simplicity of of our connection to source yeah. and the um it, there's a, a a purity of of just allowing versus you know, it, I mean, I do like ritual, I do like stones, I have my flower essences, I have my different yeah. tools that I use to get there and and I think where I find the balance is that I recognize everything that I go through on a daily basis and that there's so much in my life that has nothing to do with my spiritual evolution. And so, you know, when you have ritual or you have, you know, different kind of tools that help you tap into that power, even if it's just placebo or whatever it is, you know, it's, um, as long as it's serving you and, and not hindering you. Cause yeah. I mean, it, it, you can remind it sometimes I'll wish, Oh, I wish I had my potion. And I don't, I'm like, okay, well visualize the potion, visualize all the energy that's in the potion and kind of tap into that. Cause you can do it from a, you know, across the world. You can tap into, well, when you do Reiki, I yeah, mean, you're you can send it. Reiki to people like that's you know exactly it's, it's crazy the shit you could do with reiki and for me it's like i'm just scraping the tip of the iceberg like you know you can go into your inner child and like past life and the future like it's yeah it's wild <laughs> awesome awesome would you have any other life hacks for us like what is your top stuff in terms of so you were born and raised in la right yes. Burbank, yeah. So I How moved. did you turn out so well? 
Um, <laughs> honestly, my parents, like, I think a, my parents are a big part of how I ended up. Um, they were very strict with me when I was younger. And it's funny because my dad, he worked in hotels and wore a suit and tie to work every day and was, my dad's Latin. He's from Guatemala and was very strict with me, a lot more strict with me than my brother, um, just because I'm a girl and I'm also the youngest. Um, And my mom, she just kind of let my dad, my parents um, always kept the, the parental unit. My parents came first, which I think why their marriage has lasted so so long. Um, But now that I'm older, um, they've kind of let me do my own thing and let me wander into different religions. And I grew up going to church, not often, but just... You? Yeah. I I went to this uh, really hardcore Christian school called Village Christian. Dang. Um, Yeah. That sounds hardcore. And uh, yeah, when I was in fourth grade, um, my fourth grade teacher told me we were learning about Adam and Eve and someone asked like, oh, what about like two men together? And she was like, "Mm, gay people go to hell. Um, (laughs) When I was in um, fifth grade, my fifth grade teacher told me that, you know, you have to accept Jesus into your heart or you're going to go to hell. And there's demons on your shoulder whispering like bad things for you to do and that kind of like fucked me up as a kid and my wow. my mom actually had to put me in therapy because I like couldn't sleep over it I had yeah so like demon possession like triggers me like I do not watch movies about that shit because wow. it just like yeah Christianity just kind of fucked me up in that way I think I think it was an evangelical school so they were like really hardcore um but then sixth grade I went to public school and I was fine <laughs> but Thank yeah goodness. so so um Yeah, it's – so when I got into high school, my parents were just like, yeah, whatever. We don't go to church anymore. We're too busy. Do your own (laughs) thing as long as you're, like, nice to people and your intentions are good and you're not hurting others or yourself, you know. That's all we can teach you. Um, But as I've gotten older, I've had just crazy conversations with my parents, and um, they both grew up in the 60s. They were flower children and – Um, My mom was an exchange student in Mexico and did mescaline and acid (laughs) and like was just crazy. And then my dad, who I always growing up was so conservative, um, he loved Carlos Castaneda and used to do mushrooms and hung out when he was in college, like hung out in um, a village in Guatemala where there were shamans and would just do mushrooms and sleep under the stars with just a sleeping bag. And like, it's so spiritual now. Yeah. It's like, so it's so interesting um, how my parents were really just super out there and spiritual, like when they were younger. And then I think, you know, they got married and had kids and they were like, oh, like we need to install morals you know, and they both grew up Catholic, um, but it didn't really resonate with them. My mom kind of has issues with the the Catholic church. So they kind of like, oh, well, Christianity is kind of similar, like, you know, God and Jesus, let's send them to a Christian school, you know, they'll learn Seemed like a good idea at the time. And it had a good daycare center because both my parents had to work full time. So, you know, um, so yeah, it's interesting, but yeah, I think my parents influence and, um, just how they let me just do my thing, you know, and I moved back home two, two and a half years ago and I'm like, okay guys, like I'm going to meditate. Don't bother me. And they know when the house starts smelling like incense, and <laughs> sage, they're just like, oh, Maya's doing her meditation. Okay. Like <laughs> do your thing. Like, you know, so, so they know, but, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I meet a lot of people clients who are just they're sad they're so sad and they are in situations in their life where they're just they're so unhappy but they don't want to change it and it's like you know certain clients are just in these unhappy marriages and it's like well just file for divorce and it's like no like I like my lifestyle I don't want to lose it like you know or my kids they're gonna hate and it's like you have the tools to change this and be happy, but it's like you want to stay in the same place. And, you know, it's 
So for me, it's like, okay, like I, how am I not going to end up like that? So I think that's what really drived me to, to just kind of focus on like, how can I be just happy? And yeah, so I kind of learned from other people's mistakes and I kind of take it in little by little. And I think that's what's, what's helped me too. That's awesome. You know, I've always felt bad for hairdressers for all the bullshit <laughs> yeah. that you have to, you know, oh, put yeah. up with, but I didn't get to think about it from the perspective of all the gems that you've got and the relationships that you've, you've, you know, kind of, uh, gained in the, in the process yeah. and the mentorship and. Yeah. I mean, since I was younger, um, I had to grow up fast cause I had to, I got my chair. Um, I rent my station by the month. So, um, I don't, I don't do commission everything. I, sp- I spend money on my own products. Like I pay a monthly rent at the salon I am like, so all the money I make is mine. Um, and so I started networking at 20 and everyone else is in their thirties, forties, fifties, some of them sixties, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I had to grow up fast. I was just constantly surrounded by like older people so yeah, since which I is was, a gift to hang out with older yeah, people and you'll true. become smarter. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah, and um, so I just had to grow up fast. So when I was younger, I'm 21, and people are like, "How old are you? 30?" And I'm like, "No, I'm 21. I'm just super mature, you know." And <laughs> and yeah, so but even now, like people are like, "Yeah, you're you just seem very wise," and it's like, yeah, in in certain ways, you see one part of me, you know, but. I'm still, I'm 28 now, about to be 29 in January. So, um, so yeah, no, I still have a lot of growing to do and a lot of it's life experience, you know? Yeah. No Um, cheating. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Like if I, I think about it sometimes and it's like, man, if I had a choice to go back to being 21, 22 and like reliving that, I wouldn't because what I cared about back then was so fucking I just wanted to party and do shit and like, whatever, I'll just pay my bills and party. And that's all I care about. And now it's like, no, like, you know, I was cool. You were networking though. Yeah. I I mean, the salon Is that just the Capricorn in you? You're like, I "I gotta gotta figure this out. I need some connections. Yes. But the salon owner, um, I have been at my salon for it's this month. Um, December is my nine year anniversary. Wow. I assisted there for a year and then I got my chair um yeah started when I was 19 a month before my 20th birthday and the salon owner is like all right if you're gonna get your chair I'm gonna train you I'm gonna teach you you're gonna come to all the chambers of commerce you know networking things with me you're gonna join a BNI group you're gonna join other groups like so I was just kind of thrown into it and um yeah, and I was hard at the time. I had to do these presentations, like, about <laughs> hair, you know, to, like, all these, like, 40-year-olds. Like, most of them were men. Like, men usually don't care about their hair. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> like. <laughs> wow. Um, but, but yeah, so it's like I kind of just had to mature at a quicker rate than I feel like most early 20s don't mature at because they go – they're all in college. They're doing their thing, and I never had that college experience, so – you know, I didn't, I didn't have that. I was thrown right into, um, into my business. I, I graduated high school on a Friday. I started beauty school that Monday. Wow. Um, yeah. And so it's like, I didn't have a break at all. And yeah. (laughs) What made you want to be a hairdresser? Um, and you saved a lot of money. I got my bachelor's in general studies, and it cost me a lot of money. Yes, my mom <laughs> tells me all the time. She's like, oh, thank God you didn't go to college because after your brother, I don't think me and your dad could afford it. <laughs> Dang. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I was 15, <laughs> and I started cutting my hair. I was a scene kid. Nice. And all the scene kids who I thought were so cool, all the girls were cutting their own hair. And I was like, oh, the hairstylist I go to makes my hair. I called it pretty girl hair because it was all like even and perfect. And it's like, no, I wanted like my scene mullet. And so I started cutting my <laughs> hair and um, my friends would ask me to do their hair. So I'm like, fuck it, I'll cut your hair. So I would like do it in my living room or like my kitchen and my mom's just like, Oh Lord, like, you know, and I started coloring their hair and stuff. And, um, my mom was like, okay, like there's this ROP program through your high school. You'll get to save some money. 
um, if you start beauty school right away. Um, so like, why don't you just go to beauty school? If you don't like it, you can always like go to college. And I went to beauty school and I like it, but, um, it's funny cause I'm actually at this point where I, I enjoy doing hair. I love the connections I have with people and I love, I'm a very hands-on person, but physically I can't do hair forever. I don't know a hairstylist that has worked over the age of 60. Um, cause eventually they start getting carpal tunnel. They get just physical ailments, you know, neck issues. And I see a chiropractor, but, wow. but still, and I don't want to do hair full time forever. A lot of hairstylists I know have other, um, notches in their belts. They have other sources of incomes because for me, there's been times that I've injured myself physically and I can't work. And wow. when I don't work, I don't get paid. Right. And, you know, I have to buy my own insurance. Like, it's expensive, you know? Um, yeah, so you actually, can't be sick either, huh? Yeah, you know? Like it's, you can't I, be having a bad day. That's why I am, like, religious about my supplements. Alex makes fun of me all the time because I have my Altoid box of, like, olive leaf, d- vitamin D3, vitamin mm. C, you know? Yeah. Like, I have Good all stuff. my immunity support plus getting chiropractic care and... um but I've kind of been looking into going back to school and um, recreational therapy because that's very similar to hair. You know, you're talking <laughs> to people, you're helping them because that's what I enjoy most about hair is connecting with people and just gaining perspective. But it's hands on mm-hmm. and it's attainable. You know, you just really need your bachelor's. And yeah, so so we'll see, you know, if I'm still yeah. feeling the same way in a few months, it's like, why not dip my toes in the water and take a class like why you not? Know? Yeah. Yeah, you're at your the end of your Saturn returns too, right? Well, the beginning. 28? 28 is when it starts. When it starts. Oh, your 30s. I think 33, oh, okay. 34, you know, with it's numerology when you're too. kind of cycling out. Yeah, I was oh, super okay. big into numerology when I was 20. That just like, you know, it spoke to me more than like astrology, zodiacs, all that stuff. And um, they say like 35 is when you really start your life experience and um your life path interesting so so everything Mm -hmm. up until then is just experience and just kind of gaining perspective and figuring it out and just kind of you know making mistakes and learning and yeah Yeah. so yeah because I feel like 20s is when you're like changing a lot more rapidly Um, right 28 was big for me Saturn returns it was yeah. It was like a monsoon. It's a mind fuck, man. Yeah. Everything, even right now, I'm just in this mental, um, just conf. I'm in this mental conflict where it's like, wow, like I believe in all these things, but like my identity is wrapped in it. If I take it away, am I still the same person? Like it's, you know, and I think it's normal and healthy to doubt yourself and your beliefs and you know it's it's how we evolve so it's just kind of like getting getting through that murkiness right yeah so it's but yeah currently I am going through that and it's it's interesting (laughs) but you got your tools yeah exactly (laughs) awesome so I wanted to ask you and we actually got into this a good amount when you're talking about meditation and Reiki and I don't even know why I wanted to ask you this but I just wanted to ask you, what's your experience of God or the goddess or source in this world other than meditation, other than Reiki? Because that would be easy. (laughs) We already talked about that. My experience. Or your understanding or your, like, how do you, like, what does it mean to you? What does it feel like? Do you believe in it? I, uh, hmm. I mean, every day I feel like my theories and beliefs are constantly changing, especially right now at this point in my life. Um, but even when I went to Christian school, I prayed every night, you know, in my head and I'd pray to God and just like, you know, but it was more selfish things like, Oh, I get it. I hope I get an A on my test, you know, mm-hmm. like I hope this boy likes me, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just dumb things like that. But, uh, but no, I believe, um, the God goddess is in all of us, you know, it's like, I do believe there is an energy that, you know, it makes us grow and plants grow and just, there's a certain beauty of just evolution that happens. Um, and I don't 
believe it's all due to man and humans. I believe there is something like the earth. I mean, humans have only been here a very short amount of time and the earth was just doing its own thing. Like before Mm. we were here. Um, Yeah, but I just, I don't know. I believe there's this power in all of us and this connection. And I feel like it does get dimmed, you know, with society and just, uh, just greed, envy, you know, seven deadly sins. Um, But I do believe that there is, I have had personal experiences with um, spirits and, with meditating, I do feel like I have guides and I'm a big believer of fairies. I oh. just love fairies. I'm very childlike and I believe there's a certain child, inner child that we need to hold on to, a certain wonder of the world and the perspective, you know, especially as a kid. It's like life is beautiful and it's as we get older, you know, it becomes scary and sad and... um So there is a certain magic I do hold on to, but it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's, I don't know if I would necessarily call it a higher power, um, but there's definitely a power, but I believe it is in all of us and it just takes, you know, a certain mental state to unleash it. The force. Yes, the force. You know, when uh, George Lucas wrote Star Wars, he was a big fan of, um, what was his name? Joseph. Oh, Joseph Campbell. Yes, yes. Joseph Campbell. He has a series on Netflix. Uh-huh. It's from the oh, 80s. Really? I mean, because he passed. I didn't know it was on Netflix. It was on Netflix, my, yeah. My uncle used to have that. Me and Alex watched a couple episodes, oh, but the shit. thing is I was usually super stoned. And oh, the okay. way he speaks, he's so intelligent, but he doesn't dumb it down. So like when uh, I'm high, I just I could not keep up with it. But it's a sober watch. But he's amazing to watch. And um certain clients I have are like really into him. And mm-hmm. yeah, the you know, the the hero's complex and all that is just, it's amazing. And it's in all of us. And that's what is in every movie. And, you know, yeah, Joseph Campbell. No, he, he, George Lucas was a huge nerd for him. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. I'm going to have to check that out. Do you believe in fate? I believe that, there are choices we could make. I believe that there is a certain endpoint that I do believe in destiny. I believe in destiny. I guess fate is another word for it, but fate just kind of, I don't know, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. Um, I think just because it's so overplayed and used, but I do believe that we all have a certain destiny and endpoint but we make choices and we don't always reach that destiny. But I believe every day we're given a choice. I'm very big into um, Oracle. I have um, um, Brian Freud, Freud, the guy that Yeah, the fairy created, cards? Yeah. I have the those fairy too. Oracle. So yes. I have different tarot cards. I have different Oracle decks by Doreen Virtue and stuff, but that fairy oracle by brian is like what speaks to me the most so before i do my weekly meditations i always pick three cards and that's like my my theme for that meditation with the cards they're like mirrors so i believe they show certain perspectives to us that we may not have been open to but we have choices and like my friend who reads my tarot cards um certain things have happened, but she doesn't say like, oh, this is going to happen. You should do this. This is how it is. It's just like, okay, this is a probable future. This is your question. So you may want to do these certain steps that is going to reach this, but futures change, people change, our minds change. Mm -hmm. So the steps you take to get to that point may change. So I do believe that there is a certain destiny we all want to reach or that is created for us, but I do believe in personal choice and power and 
you know, like that's why not everyone ends up happy because they don't take those certain steps to reach that destiny Mm -hmm. or fate that was bestowed upon us. Um, yeah. I was thinking about this the other day is just a framework because I mean, people have different ideas about oracles and, you know, divination and stuff. Yeah. But the way I kind of look at looking into the future or using divination is... Uh, is it divination? Di- I always said divination. Divination. It's, it has is to do with dive? divine. Okay. Yeah, divination like the divine. When you're divining... <laughs> Top <Top-a-nade. laughs> <Top-a-no. laughs> So, you know, when you're like (laughs) looking in your crystal ball or whatever. Um, So anyway, I was I was thinking about this as kind of like a chessboard and the Mm. chessboard is is kind of like your life. And you're not the only person in your life. There's all these other different factors. And you can kind of look if you wanted to pull back the veil, you could look at the chessboard and you could look at how the chess pieces are set up and you could have an idea. Okay. Oh, maybe this is an open pass. Maybe I got a lot of like traffic here. Maybe I have a lot of forces coming in. Maybe yeah. there's like a lot of congestion here or, you know, and so you can kind of take a peek of how the stage is somewhat set or the different, um, direction that energy is going. And then you can start making it moves. But like you said, you know, things change. And I think a lot of people wonder like, well, why if the future is not set in stone or why am I, why would I want to uh, be doing divination? But I think it it can give you an idea of kind of what you're up against, what you're working with, the general flow. It's kind of like, you know, you're in your boat and it's like, am I going to paddle upstream or maybe I should just go with the current? Or maybe, you know what, this is a situation where I need to paddle upstream because it's worth it and this is just what I have to do in order to get what I want to do, you know, get what I want. And so you just go like hardcore, but you know it, you know, and you just bring all your energy to go into the direction of your desires, um, knowing it's not going to be necessarily easy. That's just one one way I look at it. Yeah, I, I definitely see that more as uh, mirrors, you know? And, like, we're all each other's mirrors, too, you know? It's like, for me, I've gained so much perspective to my life through my clients and through their life experience. And, like, same with the cards, you know? Like, anytime I pull cards, and there has been in- instances where I've pulled the same card multiple times or, you know, like I pull from different decks of other people and I'm getting like the world completion. Like it, it happened three times in two days. Like, so it's like, okay, like Mm -hmm. coincidence, I don't know. Like, and then you reach a certain point where it's like, oh wow. Like, yeah, that totally, you know? So with my friend who does tarot, there's certain things that like, yeah, they didn't happen because I was in a different mindset. I thought my life was going in a different path, but then there's, there are certain things that I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, she, like this totally happened. Like it's, it's interesting, but I think a lot of it too is just, there is a lot of information out there that we're just not ready to receive. And I believe that's for a reason. Um, because we have to learn and a lot of it is we learn through our str- our struggles and we grow. So if we had all the information we needed, like how, you know, it's like about to take a test and someone gives you the answers. It's like, oh yes. yeah, probably like <laughs> I'm going to ace this shit, you know, but it's like, well, if you don't, if you're not given the answers, you have to study and you have to like try and see mm-hmm. how you do on your own. You got to learn. So, yeah. It's a, it's an initiation, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so, you know, we all struggle through our life and, um, I believe it's through the struggles we, we grow the most because people who have easy lives don't evolve, at least not at a as quicker much. rate. Yeah. Like, you know, if life was easy, like what would we learn from it? Exactly. And, yeah. I meet people who have had a pretty, I mean, everyone has struggles. There's different levels of it. Mm-hmm. But I meet people who, you know, like they were born in a privileged setting Mm -hmm. and things were, I mean, they worked hard for what they had, but they didn't work as hard as someone that I met that was born into a shitty situation. And there's certain clients I have that just life has dealt them shit cards and they are the most positive people ever. And then there's people that, you know, homeowners make amazing amount of money 
you know, married with kids, they're fucking miserable. Yeah. They're so unhappy, you know? So it's... They never had to look for their happiness because they had all these nice things or they right in just, front of them. Yeah, or they just did the things that their parents did or that society tells them to do. And they're like, yeah, this is why I'm happy. And then it's like, oh, huh, I like have all these things. Why am I still not happy? Yeah. 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 So it's just, just navigating through all that. So yeah, anytime a new struggle comes up, I'm like, okay, learning experience, need to like have a positive mindset for this, like, you know, but Oh, lucky me. I get to evolve yeah. past this. Exactly. Gonna be stronger. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 interesting and I think that's something people need to see more is like the struggles we have are a learning experience and we're gonna grow from this. Mm-hmm. You know? And a lot of people, yeah, they push forward into growth or, or they step back into safety and the ones that step back into safety tend to be the most unhappy so hmm. yeah that's that's what I've noticed <laughs> how come you don't have social media um well let's see I deactivated my Facebook I think when I was 24 wow that's quite I, mature of you yeah um because I think back then you couldn't delete it apparently you can delete Facebook now mm-hmm. um I reactivated my Facebook when I was 26 purely just for tinder (laughs) oh shit (laughs) because apparently um i think at that time you have to you had to have Mm -hmm. a facebook i think to be legit and i'm super happy because that is how i met alex what that's (laughs) how you met him he was my first tinder date really yeah (laughs) Yeah. oh my god that's how i met my fiance also and he was my first tinder date first and only yeah i went on like four tinder dates and after the fourth i'm like i met this dude we fucking our first date we met at this gross dive bar and we (laughs) hung out for three hours just talking and it was so much fun and he kept hitting me up right (laughs) wow and i didn't sleep with him on the first date too and he kept hitting me up to hang out so i was like fuck it like all these other people are fucking lame like i'm not gonna waste (laughs) my time it's basically the same as work i like have to you know, put on my game face. Oh, so what do you do? Like, where do you work? Where'd you grow? You know, it's like shit I do at work, (laughs) except I'm not getting paid. And now that it's like the new age and feminism, oh, I got to buy my own drink. (laughs) Like, (laughs) fuck you, man. Like, (laughs) oh my God. That's awesome. But, um, but yeah, so, uh, but then after I met him, I was like, all right, deactivate again. Um, And then with Instagram, I noticed too, I went through this big mental change last year. Um, I just realized just surrounding myself with people I don't align with, like my, my beliefs, it's, uh, more so my morals, you know, cause I could be friends with other people that have different beliefs, but it's more morally. I just have very strong morals that are just my structure and just, you know, being Mm -hmm. good to people and causing no harm and, um, yeah, like certain friends I grew up with, I was like, huh, like we just don't have the same morals anymore. And um, comparing myself to other people, you know, you go on the Instagram explore page and it's all these like models or like people who are traveling the world and you're just like Fuck. showing like, off. Yeah. But then again, it's like social media is only what people portray their life to be, you know? And um, I just notice it started making me feel bad about myself. So I'm just like, huh. And then I notice I look at my Instagram and I'm just like, fuck, like all my pictures of are are me of like smoking weed or like getting wasted or like (laughs) traveling when I do travel. And it's like, this isn't really me. And it's not who people like, it's not all aspects of me. It's just what I choose to show people. So um, so yeah, I don't really go on Instagram anymore, but I have been feeling the need like to go through my Instagram and like just purge, you know, Mm -hmm. I've had that since I was like 22 and just, I've changed a lot. And so it's like, yeah, it, but it takes time because you literally have to delete picture by picture. And I think I have like 300 pictures that it's like, I need to delete shit, but I need to take the time. And also just mentally, I'm not ready to go through that. Right. Um, but, but yeah, social media just makes me feel bad. And there's always drama on Facebook 
Mm, always, yeah. I always hear of people I know having so much drama on Facebook because it literally says in that box, how What's are on you your feeling? Mind? Yeah, like how are you? Well, know? Actually, <laughs> and yeah, and people, and I noticed when I was on Facebook, people that I went to high school with are like, uh huh, like girls just being like, oh, I feel fat today, and then people being like, no, you're beautiful, and it's just like, why would you say that? Yeah, like, exactly. Why do you want people to see you like that, or just people being so negative, or like? A lot of, you know, everything going on politically nowadays. Mm. Like, Oh, yeah. You're missing out uh, on some good fights. Yeah. So so luckily, because I work in customer service and I, you know, work with people face to face, anything that goes on politically or socially, people will tell me about it. But yeah, that week that all the fires were happening, mm. the shooting in Thousand Oaks happened, like I heard about that like three days later. So when clients were coming in like, oh yeah, I've been feeling so sad with everything going on. And I'm like, oh yeah, the midterm elections, like, but at least we won the house. And they're like, uh, no, the, the shooting, the fires. And I'm like, what? You know? So in a certain way, I I am a little more out of it. So you're protected. Yeah. But, but I am, so I am a little late to learning about what's going on, but, um, yeah, I'm just happier, not, not being exposed to that. So it just, you know, my natural introverted ways. And I noticed too, like with what I want to share, it's like, do I want to share this? Oh my God, this caption, like, is this going to be funny? How are people, you know, like I was stressing so much about a dumb caption, like, you know, and I'd even ask Alex, like, what's a good caption? And he's just like, oh, say this. Like, (laughs) it's so (laughs) dumb. Like, you know, it's just so, I'm like, why am I stressed out about, something that doesn't really matter. I don't know. So, so yeah, with social media, I'm just kind of like it, like it can be used in such a positive way, but I feel like people abuse it. The majority of people abuse it. And we need like etiquette training. People need to realize like, just because it says on Facebook, how are you feeling? Doesn't mean you need to share this with the world. You know, you got to keep in mind, like, this is the internet. Like you yeah. will be judged, you yeah. know, oh, don't say something that you're not willing to be judged for. Yeah. And also just people standing up for their beliefs and all this stuff and just wanting, like, I feel like people are just so pugnacious, just, just looking for a fight, you right? know? And, um, yeah, like I don't even own a computer. I haven't owned a computer. Dang. Um, I think since I was 21, 22, Um, but the thing is like most people, when they graduate, their graduation gift is a laptop for college, but I didn't go to college. So I didn't need a laptop and I never cared because I would just use my parents' computer. And then when my mom got her new laptop, she gave me her shitty laptop, which was like (laughs) the first version of, um, MacBook that came out in 2000, 2000, yeah, 2000. And I used that and it broke and I'm just like whatever by then I got a an iPhone yeah so like I just use yeah but I don't have a Facebook like literally I just have one page of apps and I'm like this is the Capricorn in me like nothing else and it's all like very organized like (laughs) how do you make like Excel spreadsheets oh I don't I don't know when it comes to computers it's like I fucking suck I know nothing about wow, it. You're and so I know. young to not know anything about computers. I know. My mom has to help me. Like if I'm typing an email, she's like, oh, you're too slow. Let me do it. And my mom's 65. Wow. But she works with computers, you know? Yeah. So it's just, yeah, with Alex too, he's like, what? You don't, you don't have Facebook? You don't own a computer? I'm like, computers are boring. Like I, <laughs> you know, and, uh, but I know wow. it is like, I do need to know it's, just evolution. I need to get with the times, but I feel like I'm just like this old person in this millennial body. Like, ah, computers are too complicated. You know, like I, yeah, I that's kind of how I'm looking at you right now. I know <laughs> it's, it's old it's lady so weird. in a millennial body. Yeah, Aww. I just yeah. So usually, if I'm trying to do something on my phone, I'm like, Alex, help me. Like, how do I do this? Like, I don't know. And he, you know, like, yeah, I just I don't know. See, but- I'm the same way, but I'm older than you. <laughs> and I know how to bust out a mean Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Oh, see, I love that shit. I, oh, I don't know. It just hurts my eyes to stare at a screen for too long. Yeah. Like, I just, I knew whatever I did with business, I did not want to work on a computer. That's the mm. number one thing I knew. 
fucking hate computers. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough. I mean, so many people have these soul-sucking jobs where they just sit at a computer doing data entry for eight hours a day, and that's just not healthy. Human beings were not built for yeah. that. I still actually – people comment when I'm – at work and I'm outside sales and I'm all over the place, but I have my Franklin Covey notebook. It's my schedule book. It's yeah. a day planner. I can't do the monthly planner. I need a day planner. And people always trip out about that. And the, the notes I have here, I write on paper oh, yeah. and I just, I feel like it's so much more of a, um, like I feel more connected yeah. to myself when I'm writing something down than if I'm typing there's almost like a, a like a the distance kind of cuts me off you want to yeah. do everything more quickly it doesn't feel natural to be sitting in front of a computer so you know it's not quite as personal yeah. to me but yeah people always trip out I'm like I don't understand how professionals don't have day planners don't have you I know, all have this a day stuff. planner for my I mean I have yeah. an app to schedule my clients but for tax purposes and also because my app deleted all my appointments once oh, or like shit. my phone broke that sounds so like technology yeah you can't depend on it you know right so I keep like for tax purposes and just in case if my phone like something happens I do have like a paperback calendar and yeah I keep journals I've kept a journal nice. consistently since I was 22 and I write in them and like Currently, I'm rereading my first one when oh, I was wow. 22, and it's it's fucking weird, man. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's a trip. I've done that before. I think my head started swelling. Yeah, and the occiput section of the brain that deals with emotions and yeah. stuff. I felt like I was reliving a lot of that, and I was going there emotionally. But on the flip side, a lot of times when I have ideas, or sometimes my journaling is in the fo- form of poems or prose and yeah. different ideas that have a more musical or artistic context and just the you know the passage of yeah. and I use those notes as like a vortex so let's say I'm in a really good mood now but I want to write a song or I want to go to an emotional place that I've mm. been before and I don't want to be experiencing that in my life but I've written it down and it's like my portal and I can go there and I have access to all those deep emotions and you know, the the dark kind of sensations yeah. but I can pull it out as I need to and uh, and put it into an artistic format yeah yeah, it's it's interesting. It's it's funny because, you know, I'm 28 now and I started my diary when I was 22 and that's not that big of, you know, like time. It hasn't been that long since I've written in there and a lot of it I don't remember. And, you know, I think a lot of that is part of the weed. Like I do <laughs> smoke a lot of weed and my memory, my short term memory is, you know, not that great. But there's certain things that I wrote that I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, I don't remember this shit. And it's like so crazy. Like, yeah, it's like you're a different person. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, when I was 22, there was a specific entry that's just like, yeah, got my own apartment. You know, I make enough money to pay the bills and party and that's all I care about and I'm just like oh my god like (laughs) like yes rock star it's so yeah it's a trip like reading backs but yeah I do have to be in the right mindset to read it because a lot of it is like you know I I tend to write in my journal when I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling just kind of weird like it's not very often I write when I'm happy so Mm. a lot of it is kind of heavy so after a few entries I'm like okay I gotta take a break like gotta take a breather you know but it's it's super insightful and it is just proof physical proof that I have evolved and it's like wow partying like fuck that shit my idea of partying is just like drinking a bottle of wine to myself and like fucking binging on Netflix like oh, <laughs> shit. you know like going out to a club and fucking taking shots Ugh, like <laughs> kill me <laughs> no I can't I can't hang with that so yeah it's um it's crazy so it's it is good I'm just like wow like I'm so glad I'm not like this anymore you know yeah. and I remember when I was younger too um a client who was older I was telling him, you know, because they ask like, oh, what I do this week? And I'm like, oh, yeah, went out to West Hollywood, went to a bar, (laughs) you know, and he's just like, partying does get old. And I remember thinking like, I'm never going to be old to party. And now it's like, I'm not even 30. And I'm just like, oh, God, like if someone wants to go out to a club, I'm like, 
uh, you know, like, can, <laughs> can I make it? Like, <laughs> I don't know if I can. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. E- evolution, right? Expansion. Yeah. You're talking about that with life. There's that part of us yeah. that keeps growing and changing. Yeah. And- you know, if we're like doing things right or, you know, I take that back. There is no right and wrong way of doing things, but I feel like if we are constantly changing, I do believe people change. I believe there is a certain wiring in our brains that we are constantly battling and working on and trying to focus on rewiring. Um, Because certain things that I thought I have passed, um, or I I thought that I've gotten over, um, they'll like resurface again. And I'm like, oh, like, Mm. I'm definitely feeling this again. Like, I need to work on this again. So I do believe that there is something in our core that doesn't necessarily change but yet we are constantly changing I don't know it's it's hard to explain and one of my mentors referred to our spiritual growth being um very cyclical uh, but also kind of we it comes around in waves like you can have waves of this very profound spiritual growth and then you can kind of have some other times where it's a little bit more challenging you know and I've definitely experienced a lot of that where I feel like I've come so far I'm in a great place you know I'm not judging people I'm in control of my emotions and then out of nowhere I'm feeling like a raging bitch and that I can't handle any more bullshit you know and it's um uh, I have my my tools also. Uh, we have a Bach Flower Essence series that's going to be coming out. Yeah. But um, I have another question for you. What do you like best about being a woman in this lifetime? Honestly, I'm not going to lie. I do love using my sexuality as power. Ah. Um, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Like I just notice, like if I'm nice to people and like, just smile, you know, they're like super sweet or nice to me. Like I notice I do get preferential, preferential, uh, treatment, um, or like dressing a certain way and like showing off my body. Like it does make me feel empowered. Um, but just because I dress a certain way or, like, I'm super flirtatious doesn't mean, like, I'm trying to fuck, you know? So <laughs> it's, like, a certain – yeah, it's, like, a mind fuck in a way because it's, like, yeah, I'm showing off my body, but you can't touch me. Like <laughs> – Yeah. But, but yeah, I love using, like, my sexuality as power. There's something about it where it's, like, I do feel empowered by that. Um, I did a nude photography for a friend of mine – And at first I was like, she asked, like, I'm doing this nude series. It's about female empowerment. And I just want like different kinds of girls on it. And, you know, just kind of like doing your thing. I'm going to paint a little bit of body paint on you. But like for the most part, you know, if you don't feel comfortable, you can wear a leotard or I can edit them. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I've never posed nude before. Like, I'm going to do it. And, you know, I had a glass of wine because I was nervous. I've never really posed for um, photography, but I did it and my friend made me feel so comfortable and we did it in another mutual friend's backyard. Um, so it was private and intimate and I just like, just was like, fuck yeah. Like I'm the only one naked, but I feel so comfortable and I felt so like empowered. And by the end of it, I was like, wait, we're done. Like you don't want more (laughs) photos. And she's like, no, I got them all. And looking at the photos, I'm just like, I felt so good after, you know? And it just, yeah. Like the woman's body is so beautiful. I mean, men's bodies are beautiful too, but like as a woman, I, I'm bisexual and I have dated women. Um, and like being physically attracted to women and sexually attracted to them like I do appreciate the female form a little bit more than I appreciate the male form oh, women are like flowers yeah and men are more like stocks yeah yeah, yeah. The like they're both beautiful in their own ways <laughs> like one's not better than the other but you know I I did used to paint when I was younger and a lot of artists that I really like tend to you know paint more women than men um Yeah, like Van Gogh, I really loved him when I was younger, and he had a lot of nudes of women. 
and um, Degas too. Like I used to dance when I was younger and Degas did a lot of ballerinas and dancers and like, you know, the female form is just, it's just flawless in every way, you know, like no matter what size or how you look, your skin color, like, you know, women are just fucking beautiful and powerful. Like we're meant to carry babies and humans and we have we actually, stargates. Yeah. And we actually have a higher tolerance of pain. Um, one of my tattoo artists, I asked him and I was younger, I was like probably 20 at the time. And, um, I was like, Oh, your male clients probably like have, you know, have gone through like longer sessions and can like handle it like a man. And he was like, actually, no, my female clients are the ones that really handle it. My male clients are the biggest you know, <laughs> babies ever. Like, and it's like, yeah, it's embedded in our DNA to handle pain. And mm. yeah, that's why when women get sick, it's like, all right, like, or when we get our fucking periods, <laughs> yeah, man, like, every freaking we month, fucking deal with that shit. That shit fucking sucks. Yeah, it does. I have canceled clients because my cramps are so bad. I'm like crying in bed, mm. you know. And men, when men get sick, they're fucking babies. Like <laughs> that is true. Yeah, like men, you know, they're they want to be nurtured. They want to be taken care of. And women, we're like we're the nurturers. But it's like you know, I feel weird when someone's taking care of me. Honestly, like it's like no, I can, I got this. Like I'm good, <laughs> you know. So, but yeah, like with periods, like I I kind of see it as um, it's. I, it, it fucking sucks. It's annoying. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like all women, when they get their periods, no matter what you're doing, whether you're on vacation, you're fucking getting married. It's like, you fucking stop whatever you're doing. You fucking have your aspirin. You have your heating pads. Mm -hmm. You have like all your shit for like, you put your self care first. And I think it's a constant reminder for women like, oh, I can't stop my life right now. So I just got to deal with it. And it's like viewing periods like that is just has like made me love it more. And mm. yeah, we can grow humans inside of it. And I feel like we're naturally more empathetic too. Um, in Navajo culture, it's like men are the, they're protectors. Men are physically stronger. Evolution, like, yeah, men have more testosterone. They can build muscle faster. Um, they're naturally stronger than us, but women, we're more intellectual, more, we're more emotional. So we're the intuitive uh, side and you need both to keep a balance. So I think that's why, you know, with women, it's like people tend to feel better when they vent to a woman rather than a man. And, you know, not everyone, everyone has their preference, but I feel like a lot of people do feel better. And like for me as a hairstylist, it's like I have a lot of male clients. Um, and yeah, they they open up to me and like I make them feel comfortable. And it's like, yeah, like I'm a woman and we're having these like this relationship. I've had some male clients for almost as long as I've been doing hair for like seven or eight years and we've grown up together. And it's like we have this weird relationship where it's like, yeah, fuck yeah, like open up to me. You know, like I'm never going to be your wife or girlfriend, but like I'm there for you, you know, and yeah. it's, it's fucking cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like life would be a bit easier if I was a man, but, even, <laughs> but it, like if I had to choose, no, if I had to choose, honestly, I would want to be born a man, but being born a female, like I don't, I love it. You know, I think it's. I don't know. I, women are just so fucking beautiful in their own way. And I just, it's awesome, you know? And I, I only hang out with girls. Like all my friends, all my friends are lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> so I get that masculine and feminine, but I love being friends with women and being surrounded by women. I've always worked with all women and like, I'm used to that. And I just, I love it, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Men are cool, but you know, they're all I, right. We'll, we'll keep them around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Alex and Nick project Grizzly. Actually <laughs> our, our men are in a band together. Yes. Yes. 
Uh, they they chat like girls though. Yeah, Project <laughs> Hen House. <laughs> Project Hen House. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but oh, no, man. I love being born a woman, and I'm all about female empowerment. And just like when I see a hot girl, I'm just like, you fucking get it. Like, yes, I wish I was as confident as you. Like, you know, like when I see girls, like, just doing their thing, I'm just like, fuck, man, like. You know, rather you see than the feel, goddess. Yeah, rather than feel competitive and be like, no, I'm supposed to be the prettiest girl in the room. It's like, damn, that girl is so confident. Like, how like I fucking admire the shit out of her, you know? Like, yeah, it's and I female empowerment is so fucking beautiful and awesome. And when you just don't view other women as a threat, and it's like, you know, when women band together, like we're so much more powerful and I feel like that is becoming more, you know, more women are becoming more self-aware because I feel like it is society that does try to break us apart. You know, all these like real housewives, Kardashians, Bad Girls Club, like all these reality shows where women are taught to like, you know, just fucking bag on each other and hate each other and compete. It's so sad. And it's like, you know, like we're so powerful. Why not bring each other up? Like, that is exactly what we are doing. Yeah. Domination University. Yeah. I love women. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on here, Maya, modern goddess. <laughs> thank um, you. Dude, this is awesome. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>